Hi, I'm Michael Mensch, and welcome to another video tutorial in my series, Shake is Money. How Final Cut Pro editors can make money with Shake now while still reading the manual and trying to figure out what Shake is really about. You know, there's a few simple things in, that I found Shake does a little bit better than Final Cut Pro, and one of those is time controls, uh, be it time remapping or what I'll show here today, slow motion or speed control. Uh, I want to show you this in Final Cut Pro first before we get into Shake. And you know, any, when any program is trying to create slow motion for a given frame rate, it must do a variation of one of two things. It must either duplicate frames across time or interpolate these frames to create new frames to fill the space of that newly created time. And the key to a successful slow motion is how well the application or the plugin does this interpolation. So here's a sample of what I mean. Let me jump to the beginning of this clip. I took some footage. It's 24p. Um, progressive footage is notoriously bad for creating slow motion just because there isn't the extra added um, fields to combine to create those interpolated frames. I took some footage and slowed it down to 50% speed or made it twice as long. And this way every other frame should be an interpolated frame. So here's an example. Shake's adaptive um, uh, speed control best at half frame. This is the original frame and there's the interpolated frame. Here's Final Cut Pro's original frame, interpolated, shake, interpolated, Final Cut Pro, interpolated. Now what I want you to look at primarily is the background information, the stop sign, the cars. Take a look at the way these programs have handled that interpolation. Here's shake, it's original, interpolated, look at the stop sign, Final Cut Pro's original and interpolated. You can see that the quality of that interpolation is much better in Shake than it is in Final Cut Pro. So let's go ahead and with a few easy steps get this done in Shake. Alright, I've gone ahead and loaded a couple of frames of footage here and I'll drop it into the timeline, either insert or overwrite F9 or F10. And I'm going to show you one way just uh, and then I'll quickly jump back and show you um, a, a better way to do this. Now if I insert this clip into or send it to Shake it's going to come up with a clip that is going to be that long. Of course the clip that I want is this entire length slowed down to 50% so it's going to need to be twice as long. So if we look at the frame the number of frames is 5 seconds and 19 frames so that's going to um, let's see 12 plus uh, 7 so 77 is 14, so 11, 14. So I want to change this to 11 seconds and 14 frames. So let's just go ahead and grind that down to 11, 14. Now that's going to be twice as long. So when I send it to Shake, it's going to give me those first 5, 19, twice as long. So let's go ahead. But again, I've got, I've got an easier way to do this, but let me at least do it this way first. Okay, right click, send to Shake comes up we'll keep that the same we'll load our shake into a place where we can find it later right now my documents folder and we'll choose a place for a placeholder on an external volume and go ahead and say launch shake and bring up shake now a couple of things in shake that we need to just touch base on real quick as it's coming up here is all right here we go remember in the node view we have our uh, footage which we'll double click to load in the parameters and into the viewer we have our switcher node and our multi-layer node as well as our file out node when we've double clicked that node the um, file in node it loaded it both into here we'll check the globals to make sure that the frames are 278 that's twice as many as I need I really need 139 um, and then we'll click down here on home to set our timeline to make sure that all 278 frames show up in our timeline. Another thing to try to avoid is we do not want to hit the auto button when we bring stuff in from Shake or from Final Cut Pro and I'll, I'll explain why in a second. The time range is frames 1 to 278 but that's not really frame 1 because Shake is bringing in the entire media clip and clipping on pr parameters 1 tab brings up our source and timing information. We're going to click on the timing tab and notice here that the time shift is actually showing where true frame 1 is and that's actually 5,663 frames prior to what I want to call frame 1. That's going to be important information here in a few seconds so let's make some room here and see what we actually have. 
Uh, another really good thing about Shake is any node that you click on or even file ins or file outs, you have help information. If you click on that, immediately comes up a bunch of help geared specifically for that node or that um, uh, thing that you ha happen to be dealing with. So there's a lot of information in there that I'm going to let you read, like this stuff here. I'm not going to go over that right now. Um, pull down removals and, and stuff like that, conversions of frame rates to uh, film, remapping I'm not going to touch on here but I will say that if you're going to remap uh, your best bet is to export a self-contained movie file to bring into Shake to remap. Uh, it gets a little confusing when you're trying to do it straight out of Final Cut Pro. And then speed, so let's talk about speed. Click on that and then it gives us a couple of options. You don't want to touch this just yet but the, the mode at which it's going to be creating the slow motion or fast motion is either, we have three options, blend, nearest, or adaptive. Blend is going to blend the entire sequence, um, regular frames and interpolated frames together and create and try to create a nice smooth effect. That's not really what I want to do here. Nearest is going to, if it's 50%, it's going to take a frame and duplicate it so you would have frame A, A, and then the next frame would be B, B, and then C, C. And again, that's not what I want. I, I do not want duplicated frames. I want interpolated frames. Adaptive is what I want. It's going to create an original frame and then interpolate between original frames. So adaptive. Now that gives us a couple of extra options. Fast motion or best is the ability for Shake to analyze the interpolations and make a, a, um, a little bit better determination of the motion. Um, fast is generally pretty good. In this case I want to go best. It's going to slow down my render but that's okay. Deinterlacing I'm not worried about because I'm not deinterlacing. Um, always interpolate. Okay fine. Again backwards flow. It's a little bit uh, lengthier uh, uh, renders but you can read about it in the help section flow smoothness. If I click this on zero, this is best for anything that I am trying to create slow motion for that is moving. Animals, humans, that has motion already in it. I want this the flow smoothness to be nice and or as close to zero as I can get it. Uh, and that will help uh, with the process there. If I'm doing say a pan of a uh, um, city skyline and everything is static except for the camera motion and I want to slow that down then I'll bring this up to 100. Since this has both static images as well as motion, motion images, we're going to move it right to the middle at 50. Flow precision, read about it in the help. For now, I'm going to leave it at zero. All right, now we still haven't set the speed, so let's go ahead and do that. I want to change 1 or 100% to 0.5 or 50% speed or half speed. Go ahead and uh, tab out of that. And you'll notice that my in point, my out point has changed, as well as looking over here in the viewer, my in point has changed. Why? Well, what I've done now is told Shake that the time source original frame one is 5,663 frames prior to my original in point of one. But Shake has brought in the entire media clip and slowed the entire media clip to 50%. So I have to double this number or divide by my speed. So let's pull up our calculator widget. And as soon as this comes up, I want to put in 5663 divided by 0.5. And that will multiply it. Well, divided by 0.5 is multiplying, blah, blah, blah. And I get a number 11,326. So I'm going to drop this number in here, minus 11,326. Now again, what this is telling Shake is my original frame one off of the media clip is minus 11,362 frames away from the original frame one, which is now 5,662 frames away. I hope that makes sense. Uh, it certainly does to me, but there's going to be an easier way to do this, and I'll show that um, later at the end. Okay, so now I have all 278 frames that will take me to the end of that one clip that I wanted and disregard all of the extra stuff uh, when I expanded the, the uh, shape in or the, the length of the clip in Final Cut Pro. So let's go ahead and render that out.
render file out node. 278 frames, uh, high quality render. And I'll bring that into Final Cut Pro and uh, we'll show that to you later. But before I do that, now, let's just assume that I've rendered that and while it's rendering I'm gonna go and do some other stuff so just real quick let's do this let's quit out of here no we don't want to save let's delete all this all right here we are back in Final Cut Pro I want to insert my footage now instead of increasing this by the double the frames to do the um, uh, interpolation correctly let's go ahead and rough out the speed now this is a great way to um, to do this here I, I want speed now at 50% you could choose anything 63% uh, 72% whatever just remember that when you go into shake you want to change that percentage to the exact number that you're going to be putting into shake alright so 50% let's say okay that's going to automatically double plus it's going to keep those same frames now let's send this to shake uh, again we'll keep these the same it's going to ask whoops let's go back here there save yes replace there send that to Alex yes replace okay launch shake great and here we come some of you might find this easier but I think the math is more confusing as to why you have to do things uh, a certain way so let's go ahead and double click this load it back in here hit our timing tab get this up out of the way so we can see now look the time shift is automatically set to the 11,326 the retime is not so let's go ahead and hit speed change this to adaptive and also notice too that our first frame is nowhere close to our first frame that we want to bring back into Final Cut Pro change it to adaptive change it to best change this to 0.5 now and now we have that clip again it's easier it makes more sense but if you don't understand what this number is and you run into errors you're gonna have some problems so let's go ahead and render this get back into Final Cut Pro and see how we reconnect it okay so here we are back in Final Cut Pro and you'll notice that uh, Shake has brought back in the uh, the clip here and let's go ahead and turn it on and we'll see what we've got well let's turn it off and see what Final Cut Pro gave us okay not too bad and let's turn on shake and see what shake gave us just enough smoother that you can tell the difference and um, I think it's a little bit more effective and it's this very simple um, plan I mean it's a very simple technique to send it into shake do your slow-mo there and bring it back into Final Cut Pro uh, I hope this tip has been helpful oh one more thing just a reminder I didn't really show it on the tutorial just double check your preferences in the file out node to make sure that it is going to QuickTime and um, and you know I shoot progressive a lot so I like to ch it defaults to a interlaced and I like to change it to back to progressive so just double check those on your way out the door and you'll be in good shape I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and uh, good luck with shake